Jonah's story has had a profound effect on many people. One of these people, a composer and producer named Jack Lenz, asked me several months ago to write a song about Mona. Okay, let's come down. The whole Mona project, as we are now calling it, started with a song. Doug Cameron has been a very good friend of mine and a Baha'i friend uh, through lots of different projects. And I asked Doug Cameron, when he was staying at our home here, if he would uh, write a song about Mona, the youngest of the ten women who had been killed in Shiraz. Uh, he readily consented, knowing that it would be a difficult task. The song was originally called Mona with the Children, and I felt that he had captured a great deal of the sort of spirit of this girl in the song. Mark. When I was trying to write a song about Mona, I found it pretty difficult because I didn't have an idea that could express, I thought very well, um, what her experience would have been or what she would have wanted her, the expression of her experience to be. And then I got the idea of dancing mm -hmm. and the idea that, that she was dancing and that we were dancing and that the world was dancing. And I found out later that when her sister went to visit her in the prison for the last time, Mona asked her sister to do her a favor, and that favor was that she would pray that Mona would go to her execution dancing. So I was pretty happy because this image dancing was, seemed so important to her in the song. Send your love to me. Send your love to precious dancing. Every precious moment will be free. All right, we feel the dance. Feels good. Almost 12 months ago, they talked to me about was the feasibility of doing a video about it. And at the time, we thought that it really it wanted something much longer to portray the delicacy of, of what we felt was happening in Iran. And um, I think that just with the passing of time, it, it seemed to be more relevant and more possible. The whole tide of uh, more political videos began to happen, and, and we felt that we really could do it. Rodney Charters is a director cameraman who brought his own very special skills to this project. He really sustained this project this tremendously. Here, what, he brought to it to a quality that, that really kept it going. Mark, 51A, take one. One of the happier accidents in making this video was the discovery of Roya Mahmoudi, who played the role of Mona in the video. Not only was there a remarkable similarity in appearance between Roya and Mona, but there was also a special warmth and spirit that she brought to the making of the video, very reminiscent, I'm sure, of Mona's qualities, that made it more like a real-life experience than, than simply a recreated one. She also was very concerned about the authenticity and the accuracy of portraying the story. And I think that that was probably because her mother and father-in-law were abducted and executed in Iran. In 1981. I think you, you push her, you push her. Away. I'm trying to get a feeling of what the Baha'is are going through there. And it's really tough. People think so. We have the information about it, we hear about it. Not till you've partaken of it do I really think that you can feel what's going on. And I really feel that I've only gotten a glimpse of it, even though I've played out the role completely. Um, what would go on in the mind of a 16 year old? I don't know. Someone that fresh, someone who enjoys life that much. And yet Mona seems to be someone who is extraordinarily mature and very in tune with her beliefs and her understanding of what a human being is. Mona, like her father, had a deep love for the Baha'i teachings. She also loved to draw and to write poetry. When the guards came to arrest her, her mother asked, why are you arresting a 16-year-old child? The guard showed her mother one of Mona's poems and said, this isn't written by a child. This kind of poem could set the world on fire. Mona's mother was in prison for five months at the same time as Mona. And when she came into the prison, Mona took her aside and asked her to do something for her. 
She said, Mother, don't treat me in any special way. I want you to show your love and affection to all these other prisoners so that they won't think that I'm lucky to have my mother here. I want you to be a mother to all of them, just like you would be to me.